So Amy Klobuchar has, what, five, six, maybe seven supporters in total if we're being charitable. And we definitely know that one of them is Bill Maher, which is strange considering in 2016 he claimed that he supported Bernie Sanders, even if he kind of downplayed Bernie's chances. But after the 2016 election, I think in early 2017, he said he wanted Bernie Sanders to run again. And Bernie Sanders is now running again, and he is supporting Amy Klobuchar, a person polling a little over 1% overall, who once ate a salad, the entire thing, with a comb, who threw a binder at her staffers, who is incredibly boring, is not energizing the base, wouldn't energize the base. That's who he's backing. And look, we knew that this was probably going to be the case because a couple of weeks ago, actually about a month ago, he said, I'm looking closely at Amy Klobuchar, and he brought her on the show and essentially tried to make the case for her and have her make the case for herself. But as you're going to see, his audience wasn't really feeling it. And if you look at the like to dislike ratio on that video, uh, nobody else was feeling it online either. So, you know, as if we needed more evidence that Bill Maher was out of touch, watch this interview because essentially he he's going to shit on progressives with uh, Amy Klobuchar. And it's just... It's embarrassing. It's pathetic. Obviously, obviously, this is a fight between two wings of the party, which is almost every election. There is a, a center in the Democrat, a center-left wing. You're plenty liberal. You're plenty mm -hmm. progressive. And then there's a far left, which I think would be represented by Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. Yay! Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. We, we all like them, too. I'm, <laughs> Are they too left? Is Elizabeth Warren so, too far I, I left will, to get elected in a general myself. election? Again, I want to win big. And uh, if someone is looking to kick 149 million Americans off their current health insurance in four years, uh, then I'm not your candidate. You're not on board, uh, if right. you want to use a bunch of hardworking people's money to send rich people's kids to college for free, then I'm not your candidate. And just because people say ideas are bold doesn't mean they're bold. They may be bad. And so my bold ideas are this. Make it easier for kids to afford to go to college, but don't forget that there are many paths to success. And that right now we have a huge need in our country for jobs that require one and two year degrees. And we should not leave those people behind. Right. Uh, remembering that we need to take on pharma prices, a public option, take on climate change in a big way, something that this president has just gone backwards on. Work with the rest of the world, not leave our allies behind. Don't coddle dictators. Um, and when I was listening to the panel before, I was not in Washington, but I was not for the Iraq war, but I would never leave those Kurds for, left for slaughter like this guy has done. Yeah. That is not what America does. Right. That's not what you do. You honor your commitments. You keep, you make your, your promises and your threats and you keep them. And this is, the whole world is watching right now. So, I, I think to get back to the center left argument, I think you're probably more in the, again, center left, not far left. Mm -hmm. um, and that is going to come down to one candidate from each. Now, right now, it's Joe Biden, who is the leader of the, the center left part. One applaud. Um, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I've always said, I like Joe. He's never my, my favorite. But if he's the guy to beat Trump, I was like, let's not kill him, because if he's the one. But I must say, my confidence that he can beat Trump is waning. He looks like a depreciating stock to me. <laughs> and I've always said that also, we were talking about age with Howard. I've always fought against ageism because it's a judgmental thing that, you know, very few, you can do that by very few other things in America anymore. It's a case by case basis. Elizabeth Warren is 70, she looks 50 and acts 20. <laughs> she. She take, took f selfies with 4,000 people. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I trust someone who wants to be president that much. <laughs> Joe, I don't know. And Bernie, you know, just had a heart attack. I, I think, that, you know, I'm not trying to get Joe out, but the, we do need someone in the center yes. who say younger and femaler. <laughs> Is that I, 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 Honestly, athlete. you know, I... I right. So, my case is this. Yeah. Uh, I have won every single race every single time, all the way back to elementary school, where I have... <laughs> These guys always say they've won everything, so... <laughs> when my slogan I've discarded was, all the way with Amy Kay. 
Yeah, that was not good. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. <Is> that... <laughs> so, and I've done and what that was the upshot of by that? going what, uh, not just... What happened? After... By going not just where it's comfortable, but where it's uncomfortable. Right. Uh, by bringing people with me, by reaching out to people, by unifying them and seeing well, that common ground. And that's how I've gotten things done in Washington I, I as well. I think you could be the dark horse because, you know, it is going to come down to that battle. I swear to God, neoliberal elites, they are incapable of learning. It doesn't matter that 2016 just happened. That was the last presidential election cycle. They pretend as if it happened 100 years ago, and there was nothing to be learned about that election cycle. Nothing to try differently. Try the same thing again. So let's just try to go through some of the idiotic things he said. He described Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren as far left. That's inaccurate. Bernie Sanders is center left. He's a social Democrat. Now he describes Amy Klobuchar, Bill Maher does, as center left, but she would be centrist to center right in actuality. Because it's easy to like view everyone who is just center left in America as far left when the Overton window is shifted so far to the right and we kind of just view everything through that lens. But in actuality, if you look at the average leftist and right-leaning politician throughout the world, uh, Amy Klobuchar is a right winger. Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, they are center left. Bernie Sanders is slightly to the left of Elizabeth Warren. He's more reliable on left wing issues. But I mean, these are center left candidates. They're not far left at all. And he says here, is Elizabeth Warren too far left to get elected in a general election? Uh, no. I would worry about her electability just because I don't know that strategically she would have what it takes to go up against Donald Trump. Certainly, I would hope she beats him. But um, is she too far left? No. I would be worried that she's not going far left enough to beat Donald Trump. Because here's the thing. Whenever we see elections, this is about who can energize their base the most. And Republicans, love them or hate them, they do a good job at throwing red meat to their base and energizing the base. They never try to win over moderate Democrats. They never try to pander to the center. They go as far right as they feel as if they need to to energize their base, and it helps them. They win. Donald Trump is president. So it it's just astounding that neoliberal elites, political pundits who talk about this for a living, can't grasp that what Democrats need to do to win is energize the base. So by going too far to the left, you're not making your electoral chances less likely. You're likely to be more successful if you energize the base by going to the left. He doesn't get that. Klobuchar responded to that by lying about progressive policies. She says if someone is looking to kick 149 million Americans off their current health insurance in four years, then I'm not your candidate. If you want to use a bunch of hardworking people's money to send rich people's kids to college for free, then I'm not your candidate. Either she is so uninformed that she doesn't know anything about policy, or she's lying. Now, we all know that this is a smart human being. This woman knows her stuff. She knows about policy specifics. So that tells me she's lying. This is how she framed Medicare for All, kicking 149 million Americans off of their health insurance. Well, let's reframe that to what's accurate, Amy. If you don't support Medicare for All, you support people dying if they don't have health insurance. That's what you support. So you support a public option. Okay, well, if you don't have money to pay for the public option, then you still don't get health insurance. So you support people dying because if you want to try to disingenuously frame Bernie's plan as kicking people off of their plan, then let's frame your proposal for what it is. It's a pro-death proposal. You just want less people to die by making it easier for them to get health care with a public option. But people will still die under your plan. So your plan is pro-death. Bernie's is pro-life, for lack of a better word. So if you want to be disingenuous, you don't have the moral high ground here. So I would advise you to not lie about this really important policy that the Democratic Party base supports. On top of that, um, think of how stupid you have to be to believe her line about sending rich people's kids to school for free. How many rich people are going to go to a public college? I mean, maybe a couple of them, but if you are rich, you're probably going to go to a private school. This is what Hillary Clinton said in 2016. Well, I don't want to pay for Trump's kids to go to, you know, public colleges. That's crazy. Except Donald Trump's kids did not go to public schools, you liar. They went to private schools as all elites 
do. So they're lying in order to make themselves seem as if they're more progressive, but really they're just hiding. They're trying to distract you and make it seem as if they have the moral high ground, make it seem as if they're more progressive, but they're not. And uh, Bill Maher called Amy Klobuchar center left. No, she is not center left. At best, she is a centrist. At worst, she's right wing. Because I'm sorry, if you as a democratic politician are to the right of Tories in the UK, then that doesn't make you center left. That makes you a right winger. Because you can ask any uh, conservative parliament member in the UK, do you support your national health system? Meaning you think healthcare should be free at the point of service? And they're going to say yes. In fact, they can't go against it. Otherwise, they know that they're going to get their asses handed to them in the next election. Now, certainly, they try to undermine it. They try to chip away at it. But publicly, they are going to say they support it. Amy Klobuchar isn't even where the average Tory is. So for you to say she's center left, it just communicates to me that you think politics in America occurs in a vacuum, Bill, and you can't see what other countries are doing. But in actuality, if you look at other countries and where their right-wing parties are, they're already on board with single payer. I mean, the conservative party in Canada, they support Canada's single payer system. So the fact that Democrats don't even support that, it shows you that uh, they're not center left. They're centrist to right wing. I would argue that they're right wing. Now, Bill Maher also, um, at least he, he kind of started to realize that Joe Biden can't beat Donald Trump. I was shocked when he actually said this, but he says we need someone in the center who is younger and femaler, dot, dot, dot. So, I mean, if you put two and two together, we're really looking for someone who is a little bit more pragmatic, who can win over independents and possibly Republican voters, dot, dot, dot. And what is he opting for? Someone like Hillary Clinton? Because the characteristics he is looking for in a candidate, they're applicable to someone like Hillary Clinton. We all know how she fared against Donald Trump. We have Donald Trump as president. Now, Amy Klobuchar said that she wants to bring people together after he said that. So, I mean, at this point, why doesn't she just make Stronger Together her slogan and um, choose Tim Kaine as her running mate? I mean, this is why I say neoliberals, they're incapable of learning their lesson because we just got a pragmatic female candidate that wasn't enough, right? That wasn't enough to beat Donald Trump. Sure, you can say Hillary Clinton won the popular vote and maybe she just had a failed campaign strategy. If you want to win... You have to energize your fucking base. They're never going to learn. They're never going to learn. They're just going to continue to impose whatever strategy on all of us that they say is the best. And they're never going to listen to people outside of their bubble. Hence why they're going to keep losing. Because people in the Democratic establishment, if they're going to watch any shows, do you think they're going to watch me? Or secular talk in the Rational National? No, they're going to watch Bill Maher. So they're going to listen to what he says and take his advice when this is disastrous advice. If you want to beat Donald Trump, you go left and excite the base. This shouldn't be rocket science, right? But for some reason, they just can't grasp it. So, I mean, Amy Klobuchar is garbage. I gave her credit before for just being a boring centrist who didn't lie about policies like Medicare for All. But now she's doing that. Now she's getting desperate. Now she's lying about Medicare for All. So this is where you become my direct enemy and I start attacking you because you're attacking policies that would literally save lives shame on amy klobuchar you're not gonna win so just drop out and uh bill maher should be uh, ashamed of himself i mean i don't think there's been a bigger fall from grace with anyone in the mainstream media perhaps the only person who fell further from grace than bill maher is rachel maddow but i mean these people they just they are clearly in a bubble they don't know what will make a candidate successful they don't know what voters want because they're rich they're out of touch they don't realize how important issues like medicare for all are so um if democrats take their advice democrats will lose it's as simple as that